Hi there, Mikey. It's the morning of the second day of the third test match. I'm here in Sydney as always. The match is across the country in Perth. It doesn't start till the early afternoon here in Sydney. I'm in a car on my way to an antenatal class for our first baby, um, which is going to mean that I'm going to miss the first session of play today. Um, and when they talk about the sacrifices that parents make for their children, they don't come much bigger than this, although I will be taping it. Um, as for yesterday's play, the Wacker pitch, which I mentioned was really uh, traditionally really fast and bouncy, seemed to be absolutely back to its best. Australia won the toss and batted and the balls were flying very, very quickly, even from the English bowlers who aren't necessarily all that fast. Uh, England took a few wickets early on and got themselves into a position where they may have been able to be uh, in front at the end of the Australian innings. But as has been the case more than once this series, the Australians um, dug deep and put together a strong partnership. I've mentioned um, George Bailey a few times to you, um, the guy that I like, but I don't think he's quite good enough. Once again, uh, he failed uh, and played a pretty ordinary shot to get out, so his position in the side is probably going to come into some question very soon. Steve Smith, who I've also mentioned, the guy that I said looked like he'd been stung by um, a lot of bees. Well, on Twitter, the consensus is that he looks a bit like a pig. Far be it for me to criticise someone for being bad looking. Um, but it's all irrelevant because he played at a coming of age innings. He scored <clears throat> a, a sublime century. And this, uh, at a point when Australia really needed runs, when the ashes were on the line, will be a life transforming thing for him. Probably will mean that his total income throughout the rest of his life is an extra $10 million as opposed to what it otherwise might have been. Um, his, it was the innings of the day, it was a, a real treat to watch. Um, towards the end of the day, England was so desperate to quell the Australian scoring, they deliberately bowled wide of the stumps to sort of bore the Australians out. And this amused me because Channel 9, the host broadcaster, gets a, bit, a little bit nervous during the Perth Test match because the final session um, in the eastern states runs into prime time. And so they're trying everything they can to make the cricket as exciting as possible. And it was one of the most entertaining days play that I've seen for a long time. But right on the, the start of prime time, it got really boring. And you can imagine all these old pensioners saying, geez, this, is, this edition of CSI Miami looks really boring. What's going on here? Anyhow, Australia finished the day. Um, they're six wickets out. They've scored about uh, 320 runs, and I think when Australia come into bowl that they are really going to uh, cause some um, real panic amongst the English batsmen, and you could even see someone go to hospital that could be that fierce and fearsome. <laughs> that fast and fearsome. Anyway, I'll speak to you later with my report on day two. Bye.